This is Amy Poehler. My new movie, Disney and Pixar's Inside Out 2, is coming to theaters June 14th, and it's making me feel joy Woo! and sadness oh. and anger. Ah. Definitely some disgust. Rose! And I think a little fear. Ah! But I'm also feeling these new emotions like anxiety, embarrassment, envy, and ennui. Ah. It's what you call the boredom. Okay, that one was weird. It's going to be the feel-everything movie of the summer. Disney and Pixar's Inside Out 2. Rated PG. Parental guidance suggested. Only in theaters June 14. Get tickets now. Nickelodeon, or just Nick, has been entertaining kids and annoying their parents since at least the 1980s. Over the years, the preeminent kid-focused channel has produced dozens of original programming, ranging from cartoons to variety shows to comedies to game shows. Now the panelists of the great pop culture debate want to relive the orange years and dodge the slime buckets as we attempt to determine what is the best Nickelodeon original series. I aged out of Nickelodeon before it got cool. I'm your host, Eric Resniak. Please help me welcome my panel for this episode. First, she made it here after making chocolate pudding at 3 a.m. because she's lost control of her life. It's Ama Marfo. That is a real line from Rugrats that feels too close to my actual life. But anyway, let's talk Nicktoons. Next, it's Andrea Guerrero. Andrea, I have to ask, why are you wearing a catcher's face mask? Because, Eric, podcasting day is a very dangerous day. <laughs> Oh, honey, with our hot takes, someone is sure to get burned. Our next panelist thinks he's an oblina, but he's really more of a crumb. It's Curtis Creekmore. Hmm, that would explain my armpit fetish. Well, just a reminder that this is a family show. <laughs> and finally, what rolls downstairs, alone or in pairs, and over your neighbor's dog, it's Joelle Bodecker. Thanks, Eric. I'm better than bad. I'm good. You sure are, Joelle. Just remember, don't whiz on the electric fence. And Bob Erlenbeck is in the producer's booth, ready to slime us if we say the magic words. Bob, you can't do that on podcasts. If you're curious about how we ended up with this Sweet 16, become a Patreon supporter of the podcast, or check out a bonus preview of this episode on your podcast platform of choice, in which we go through the whole bracket up to this point. And don't forget, you can head to greatpopculturedebate.com and find the listener bracket for this episode, so you can play along with us at home. But that out of the way, the Fire Nation is attacking, so let's get into these debates. First up, it's another you unanimous decision in favor of ultimate number one seed Rugrats, which put 5C Double Dare down for a permanent nap. Next, the panel is currently split between two different shows that involved Courage, 6 seed Nickelodeon Guts and 2 seed Are You Afraid of the Dark? Ama, climb that fake mountain to get votes for Guts. Curtis, initiate us into the Midnight Society as you defend the dark. Curtis, you go first. So I've always been a fan of thrillers. Not horror per se, but just enough to get the heart pumping and the goosebumps tingling. Um, I still get goosebumps today when I hear the intro of that original Are You Afraid of the Dark theme song. I spent so many Friday nights wrapped up in a blanket, sitting in the dark in my room, getting the shit scared out of me by this show. Um, the premise of the show was pretty simple. A group of friends would get together and tell spooky stories around a campfire. Each episode would be the stories retelling, and the episodes would end with a dowsing of the campfire over the ethereal and creepy outro music. I think the premise was so smart because you weren't hampered by the need for continuity. The members of the Midnight Society didn't really need to be developed since the majority of the time was spent telling the story. And because of that, every episode was novel and it had its own twist. And some of them were legitimately scary. Thank you, Curtis. Ama, talk to us about Guts. So it was always really interesting to me that Nickelodeon also had elements of their programming that encouraged kids to get active. So it was like, yeah, you can go watch TV, but also like spend time outside, enjoy the environment, uh, be active, use your body. And Guts, I think, was kind of the pinnacle of that. So in a world where a lot of us kind of grew up with American gladiators and these kind of like larger than life stunt, really sport related things. Guts was the kids' equivalent of that. It was an opportunity to do some of these extreme sport type things that you wouldn't normally get to do, capped off by the scaling of the aggro crag, which was this massive experience to kind of see kids win pieces of the aggro crag as a reward for scaling it. it was always really fun. I keep talking to people my age now that are like, could we find pieces of the aggro crag on eBay? I don't know who's selling theirs, but in a second, I would absolutely buy one for sure. But yeah, to me, I think it kind of harkens back to a time where 
they didn't have to do things like worldwide day of play because kids were dividing their time between tv and being active and tv was encouraging them to spend time in both again as a kid who wasn't allowed to watch uh, are you afraid of the dark that uh, instinct to turn it off when you hear the music still holds. Whereas with Guts, it was just always something I was really excited to watch and got inspired to turn the TV off and go play afterwards, which is that feels like a unique impulse as well. You lost me at turning the TV off, but uh, Andrea, where are you on this one? I'm going to go with, are you afraid of the dark? We kind of alluded to it in round one. There's no other show like this on the bracket. It is completely unique. All right. And Joelle. Um, I'm, I'm with Guts. Do you have it, Guts? So I believe we are split evenly right now, and I get to make the decision. If you're wondering at home, I'm not debating this one because I literally, like, I, I aged out of Nickelodeon before this. And I'm giving it to Are You Afraid of the Dark? I think we do have other game shows on this list. We don't have any other horror shows. So for that reason, I'm giving it to a Dark. Uh, next, the panel is currently unbalanced in favor of One Seed Avatar The Last Airbender, but Joelle still feels brotherly love toward Five Seed The Adventures of Pete and Pete. Joelle channel Artie, the strongest man in the world, as you defend both Big and Little Pete. Andrea, bend the other panelists to your will and get Avatar into the Elite Eight. Joelle, you go first. Oh boy, I'm so sad that this is three against one right now. Pete and Pete is the quirkiest, weirdest show for kids, and that's obviously just the log line going in. Um, it's It has this surreal a- aspect to it that you're just watching and you're like, is that, could that actually happen? Is that real? Or do people ask those questions? The show is weirdly brilliant if you like just think about it for a minute which as a kid I wasn't but as an adult and I watched it this week and I was like oh wow they are making social commentaries I didn't even think about and it's a lot of commentary on small town life and society and this and that um what I love about the show is is the speed of it which is not for every kid it's definitely a little bit slower of a show but you have kind of the juxtaposition of older Pete big Pete they call him who is um he's kind of like he's chill he's kind of a nerd he kind of tries to stay out of the limelight and then you got little pete who just wants to do nonsense and get into hijinks and test out theories and run around with his superhero best friend Artie. um my favorite thing in the world is toby huss who is one of the greatest character actors he's not only uh, uh Artie, but he also plays mr tasty which you would never know because he's under that giant mask the words offbeat is the only thing I could come up with and like pictures of the show just stick in my head. I'm wearing my red flannel today just for this conversation. All right. Andrea, talk to us about Avatar, the last airbender. Um, This was a show that was my generation perfectly. um, And we talked a little bit about micro generations. This was it for me. It is only four seasons long and the writers managed to create an entire world with history, culture, magic systems, politics, and they created it in a way for kids to enjoy. So our main character, Aang, is the avatar who has the ability to bend all four elements and he's also the last surviving air nomad. So right out the gate, we're already talking about genocide in a kid's show. Um, he's rediscovered by Katara and Sokka, who are members of a water tribe that very closely resemble indigenous cultures. They all become best friends and attempt to save the world. And so now we're talking about found family. Okay, We have Zuko, who is part protagonist, and he eventually turns into the good guy. And he's the product of his shitty father, Fire Lord Ozai, who has banished his son because he spoke out for the safety of Fire Nation soldiers. So now we've got generational trauma and just general domestic trauma. Um, And Zuko's redemption arc in this series over the four episodes, it's lengthy, it's messy, it's bumpy, and it's what a redemption arc should be. Um, But at the end of the day, this show is about the power of friendship. And we love that. The show is perfect. No comments, no notes, goodbye. Just a casual, you know, (laughs) everyday story. Um, uh, Amar, you're sticking with Pete and Pete here. I am sticking with Pete and Pete here, yes. Curtis, I couldn't tell if you were sneezing or crying during uh, Andrea's argument. Uh, Maybe a little bit of both. Where are you on this? (laughs) Um, Fully on Avatar. Like, I would just close this whole window if Avatar doesn't move forward. Same, but the opposite. (laughs) Okay, so we are uh, tied. I am the tiebreaker for this episode. You're down a panelist either way. (laughs) Great. Um, Here's my argument. If we're looking at the kind of uh, totality of Nickelodeon from its entire existence, Avatar is, I think, one of the later shows that are on this bracket, and it was huge. It brought 
American anime into the conversation. End of story. I don't know if we had another American anime prior to this. It doesn't matter because this one has done it better than anybody else, I would argue. And there's been a lot of copycats. And it's so successful that it is now being remade as a live action Netflix series. It 100% put Nickelodeon back on the map in a very big way. So I'm giving it to Avatar here. I'm sorry for the Pete and Pete fans. I really am. Um, It's another split decision between two seed The Fairly Odd Parents and three seed Legends of the Hidden Temple. Amma, sprinkle some magic dust on the Odd Parents to whisk them into round three. Joelle, tell us which tribe you'd be a member of and find the secret treasure that can save Temple from collapse. Amma, you go first. So I was a big Legends of the Hidden Temple kid for reasons similar to what I mentioned with Guts, but there was just something so irreverent about Fairly Odd Parents, particularly within the stage of Nicktoons it was in. It just kind of stands out as having like a similar type of silliness to some of the ones that I loved most. Like I'm a huge Rocco fan, really liked Ren and Stimpy. Um, so the idea of something just being so silly and outlandish was a lot of fun. Um, it kind of brought me back to Nickelodeon at a point where I think I had thought I had aged out of it. Um, so it was a nice kind of return to form in a lot of ways. I mean, thinking about, again, that kid that kind of feels isolated, um, unsure of his place in the world, having the support in the supernatural format. Um, yeah, just a lot of fun. Uh, second coming of Next Door Neighbors on a show uh, whose name indicated that they did not have kids. The, Doug had the Dinks, uh, and the Turners had the Dinklebergs. Uh, Chris Kirkpatrick doing some of his finest work as Chip Skylark. That's a read. My Shiny Teeth and Me. Um, there's just so much to love about it. Such such a fun, fun experience. And again, kind of uh, bringing people back in a similar, similar way to some of the other shows after early ones maybe fizzled out. Great. Thank you. Uh, Joelle, talk to us about Legends of the Hidden Temple. Um, I love this one. Olmec is a freaking icon. Olmec should be everyone's like, you know, I don't know. Everyone should just think about Olmec all the time because he's awesome. The show always had teams, boys and girls. One of the things that I read in the notes about it was that it was one of the shows that actually did sort of try to even out and not be all like boy centric, which is pretty common in the 90s. And so you have these somewhat even teams uh, they split them up into these awesome uh, uh, kind of I- icon uh, t-shirts and, and their team names. And there was the red jaguars and the blue barracudas and my personal favorite, the purple parrots got the silver snakes, which is not to be confused with the amazing shrine of the silver monkey. Um, I remember in 2000 and something early days of Facebook, we had all those communities and groups on Facebook and there was a Facebook group called, um, I really hate when watching that kid that can't put together the shrine of the silver monkey, whatever it was called. (laughs) But that's like a shared cultural history. This show, it was of its time and it was 120 episodes of kids competing and learning weird lore and memorizing stuff and being smart and fast. Excellent. Uh, Andrea, where are you on this one? I am siding with the Fairly Odd Parents. While I do love Legends of the Hidden Temple, as you said, three pieces. It should not take <laughs> that much. That's the vote against <laughs> to put together three pieces. Curtis. You can fight me, but Legends of the Hidden Temple is the best game show on Nickelodeon. That is number one. Ugh, you guys are making me really work. I was hoping to coast this episode. Um, So, uh, the Fairly Odds Parents actually has the higher seat here. It's a two. Legends of the Hidden Temple is a three. I think there were compelling arguments made for both and a significant chunk of Nickelodeon's output was game shows. To erase all of them before Elite Eight seems weird to me. Just by the way the bracket check out, Double Dare is out. I'm sorry. Hate me. Hate me. But I'm giving it to Legends of the Hidden Temple here. You can hate me. I'm sorry. Andrea's going to walk off this goddamn episode. Um, Next, the majority of the panel is currently pushing forward one seed. Hey, Arnold. But Ama is surprising everyone by standing beside four seed the secret world of Alex Max. Ama, electrify your argument for why Alex Max should advance. Hey, football head. I mean, Andrea, tell us why Arnold deserves to move into the Elite Eight. Ama, you go first. So I've been watching a lot of Hey Arnold lately Um, for the 90s Kids channel. It is both Sunday and Tuesday, so it's on all day. I love the beginning of Hey Arnold. I think the first couple seasons are absolutely fantastic, but then it kind of just descends into what dysfunctional adult is Arnold has to fix his life this week or her life this week. And that kind of got pretty boring to me. Comparatively, I think The Secret World of Alex Mack, again, another one that we have short memory about because it isn't streaming anywhere, um, was... A female-led, really interesting kind of like sci-fi show on Nickelodeon. Larissa Olenek, 
beautiful work um also inspired a book series which i also read because if anything had a book series as a kid i was gonna read it but yeah it was just really nice to see like a female protagonist that didn't feel pressured to be like super girly which was also very much my vibe involved science her sister was very smart it was kind of a balance between like how do you be smart and also be a teenager with the desire to be cool and all those things and yeah there's just so much to love about it and again maybe i am romanticizing it because it was now also a moment in time that we're not going to be able to get back at the time it meant a lot to me in a way that hey arnold even in its earlier years probably didn't but especially not as it continued thank you for that uh and hey andrea talk to us about hey arnold um, is this 3v1 right now? I believe it is currently 3v1. Uh, Joelle's, Joelle looks Joelle's like she's she's gonna flippity floppy. Okay, are you I'll switching keep... it to secret secret world? What? Well, let's see what Andrea has to say. <laughs> All right, Andrea, batter up. <laughs> I'll try to be concise. Uh, <laughs> so, Hey Arnold is an animated series that uh, takes place in a fictional city that is very heavily inspired by cities like Chicago, NYC, Seattle, and as far as kids shows go, you don't get that representation a lot of that sort of lifestyle and upbringing. And Hey Arnold, I think out of all the shows left on this bracket is probably the most diverse show. Arnold is, uh, he lives in a boarding house with his grandparents. His biological parents are presumed dead somewhere. They were like adventurers or explorers or something. Um, So his grandparents own this boarding house in the city. They've got these like, mainstay residents who are mostly immigrants there's a vietnamese immigrant there's a czechoslovakian immigrant um and so it, this show really brought a lot of different cultures and backgrounds in to the homes and tvs of young ones so this show was just so relatable and i love the diversity in this show great um curtis where are you on this one arnold fully arnold i loved <laughs> alex mack she was cool in a puddle and played the saxophone but arnold Joelle, have you been swayed back to Arnold? I was, I was almost swayed. Um, um, the whole girl in STEM thing kind of shook my brain a little bit. Um, but I think I have that for Clarissa, and we'll talk about that later. So I'm going to stick with Hey Arnold. Great. I don't have to make a vote. So we will move Hey Arnold into the next round. Uh, it is another evenly split as three-seed cartoon Doug is up against two-seed sketch show All That. Curtis, why is All That worth moving forward with or without a bag of chips? Joelle, is your underwear on the inside or outside of your pants? Call Quail Man to save the day as you support Doug. Curtis, you go first. I feel like people especially our Patreon supporters who heard part one of this episode are going to think that I don't like Doug considering I am typically the only one that's arguing against it every time. Uh, And while I did like it, Doug just wasn't the banger that I think everyone else thought it was. Doug is milk toast. He's boring. He is another white man failing upward. The ensemble of that show is what made it interesting. And that's just simply not enough for me. Speaking of ensemble cast, all that was my introduction to sketch comedy shows. Um, While I preferred the roundhouse to all that, mostly because of the theme song, all that still gave us some amazing characters that influenced Nickelodeon's fabric. All that was a star maker. Kenan Thompson got his start there. Amanda Bynes, Nick Cannon, for better or worse, and Gabriel Iglesias all also found their footing on the show and went on to bigger and better things. Without all that, you don't have shows like Keenan and Kel or The Amanda Show. You wouldn't have gotten characters like Pizza Face or Bag and Sag and Barry or sketches like Good Burger, a sketch that was so popular it went on to get its own movie. And that was so popular that it got a sequel nearly 30 years after its original airing. All that is a critical thread in the tapestry of Nickelodeon. She came with it. All right, Joel, you better you got to you got to slap back for Doug. Um, I don't know how you compete with that with a kid that wears underwear around his, you know, khakis and then puts a belt around his head and calls himself Quillman. But you can because that's creative. And he was such a creative kid and he would go home and he would draw and he would dream up and he was just always dreaming. He was a daydreamer. Um, the show was just charming and weird. Everything was weird. Like the, the colors of the show was complete nonsense half the time. People were purple and blue and white and green and yellow and it was great. Um, I don't know that Doug competes with all that because all that really was like a generation forming strong and it's a strong contender on this. And it, yes, yeah, so many careers it, it created. And yeah, I don't know how I compete with that, but I'm, I want people to love Doug. That's all. Ama, where are you? If you're asking me what you are, all that wins this. 
and it is not close. <laughs> Andrea. I did have a whole argument written up for Doug. Um, I did not consider the fact that it would be going up against all that. I <laughs> I did literally use the phrase milk toast in my notes though about Doug. So yeah. like it was kind of a, a frenemy situation in my notes. But I also think it really dealt a lot with processing emotions. He journaled every day. And that was the whole narration of the show was like basically reading from his journal. However, sketch comedy, all that um, nice gateway into SNL. I'll stick with all that. Okay, so that's three for all that, which means we will advance it into the next round. Next, in a genuinely shocking turn of events, one seed cartoon juggernaut SpongeBob SquarePants is poised to go out in favor of four seed Rocco's Modern Life. Someone call Patrick because I need a hug. Does anybody want to speak up for SpongeBob here? Uh, Curtis, are you sticking with Rocco? So we haven't talked about SpongeBob at all. Is anybody yeah. actually going to talk about SpongeBob? As of right now, nobody is scheduled to vote for SpongeBob here. That's that's kind of wild. And yeah. I think we should at least talk about SpongeBob, yep. even if it goes out here. And I do think it should go out here because to me, Rocco is uh, kind of a foundational stone of Nickelodeon. And if you didn't have Rocco, you wouldn't have SpongeBob. But I okay. think we should talk about SpongeBob. SpongeBob, and I'm not at all prepared to do this, but SpongeBob was, especially the early seasons, a fantastical show. It was it is huge i think it's still on the air it's still I'm, on the air it, it's almost totally different which i think also speaks to the fact that it has evolved with the senses of humor of generations as it's gone which is really impressive and yep. i think not a lot of shows have been able to do that but early spongebob is some of the funniest humor in a cartoon that i've ever seen um it is sad to see it go out here I think it misses my generation maybe just a little bit. And maybe that's why I'm not fighting as hard to keep it. But Rocco is, yeah, I'm going to say it's a better show. I'm okay. going to say it's a better show. Amma, um, you're sticking with Rocco here. I am sticking with Rocco. I agree with Curtis in the sense that some of my favorite writing on cartoons of all time is in those early like first two seasons of spongebob and then much like we've seen happen with the simpsons they just drove a good thing into the ground to the point where it is persistent but not necessarily consistent quality it's that argument of the legacy is ultimately harmed by not putting the the situation down when it needed to joelle you're sticking with rocco i am andrea <laughs> Sticking with Rocco, echoing echoing what everyone else said. All right. Well, I'm glad we at least gave a reason for the reason the SpongeBob was going out. Um, because otherwise, I think people would be like, WTF. It's been on the air, I think, literally for 20 years now. So uh, there you have it. But we will put Rocco's Modern Life into round three. Finally, in round two, two seed Clarissa explains it all is set to advance over three seed. Ah! Ah, real monsters. Andrea, see if you can scare up the votes the monsters need to move forward. Curtis, explain like Clarissa is more than just a know-it-all. Andrea, please go first. So we've got Ren and Stimpy. We've got Rocco's Modern Life. And then we have Ah, Real Monsters in terms of just like surreal, obscene, dumb humor. I think Ah, Real Monsters was the last of that lineage of cartoons in that vein. Um, it's about these like wannabe monsters who are very bad at their jobs and end up getting into hijinks that often involve humans. The first, I think it's the first episode is literally them trying to go scare kids on Halloween, like not going to work probably. Um, so then they discover candy, they discover school, they discover like all these different human elements. Um, and so it's just really fun to see these monsters interact with uh the normal world as it were um queer icon the gromble we assume he is male but he wears high heels and makeup and he's very fabulous very extra Work. and his voice kind of fluctuates like um jiminy glick sort of way that's what i'm reminded of every time i like, hear him um and the, the show is just so silly and goofy and kind of like what we were saying, what I said earlier, there's a lot of shows on Nickelodeon that have like values and morals, and this isn't one of them. And sometimes that's what you need is just a, some uh, dumb, silly show. Excellent work. Uh, you've done a great, I think a lot of people uh, appreciate your Jiminy Glick references in particular. Joelle, has she swayed you or are you sticking with Clarissa? Um, I... <laughs> I am sticking with Clarissa, but yes, Real Monsters is everything Andrea has said. Ama. 
All Real Monsters was a really special one for me, so I'm I'm pushing it ahead on that point in this instance. Another appearance of Tim Curry for those interested precedes Wild Thornberries, so All right. So we are split. Curtis, are you you're you're sticking with Clarissa? Yeah, I God, it's so hard. This is a really challenging one for me because I love them both and they're both so different. This is the proverbial apples versus oranges. Like, how do you compare these two? Oh, I, we've had a lot of those like dramedies. It, it, it's a comedy with a little bit of drama sprinkled in like the Hey Dudes and the Salute Your Shorts and they're all live action. And I think Nickelodeon really reveled in those types of shows. Um, without Clarissa, we don't get Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I think Melissa Joan Hart was made to play Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And while it's not a Nickelodeon show, it still was a fantastic show for preteens, teenagers, and young adults. Um, And both of these shows were staples of my adolescence. Clarissa is credited with being the first Nickelodeon series to feature a female lead. There are other shows that without Clarissa, I don't know that you get. Clarissa is the normal person. We talk about how like there are lots of shows that are pushing the envelope like Aro Monsters. Like that's so fantastical. Someone has to play the quote unquote straight man. And I think Clarissa, even though she has an alligator that she keeps as a pet named Elvis and her best friend climbs a ladder to get through her window to hang out in her room, which is probably not anything that anyone would ever allow. But Clarissa was like the normal person, but it was still an engaging show. And I think it pushed Nickelodeon forward. And we talk about the tent poles of Nickelodeon. I think Clarissa is one of those. Andrea, you want to say something? You're going to vote out Tim Curry not once, but twice in an episode. The That's level. all I'm going to say. With Queer Icon, The Grumble. Right. I mean, I'm right there. You know what? I, I, no, fuck it. No, I'm changing no, no, my vote. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Joelle's changing back? No, no. I'm with Clarissa, but I want I, I, I want to put more defense on this because I'm, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm anxious me. now. I think Clarissa um, is em- embodies the weird girl in a certain way. She might be normal, but she's also weird um, in that time. Nowadays, she'd be completely just the average kid. But at, in 1991, they might be Giants poster on her wall. She stood out and she was cool to me. That's my so, additional defense. I didn't expect to destroy so many childhoods on this episode. <laughs> yeah, um, you did. <laughs> no, and I didn't even enjoy doing it. So I'll have to do some um, makeup work with all my panelists later. But um, after all these very impassioned arguments, um, I'm inclined to give it to Clarissa simply because we already have Rocco's Modern Life in the Elite Eight. And if uh, like having two uh, really wacko com- cartoons seems redundant to me, I don't think we have anything else like Clarissa in the Elite Eight. So for that reason, I'm moving it forward. And that is the end of round two. We're going to take a quick break to attempt a physical challenge. I can't tell you how many giant mouths I've entered as an adult. We'll be right back after these messages. Five dollars can't buy you much these days. In the 90s, a Big Mac extra value meal rang in at four dollars and fifty-nine cents. Today, that same meal will cost you seven eighty-nine and leave you filled with regret. You know who would never do that to you? The great pop culture debate. For just five dollars a month, our Patreon supporters gain access to a treasure trove of unaired content, like those secret fries at the bottom of the bag. So if you're hungry for some delicious pop culture content, pass on the Big Mac and head to greatpopculturedebate.com to become a Patreon supporter today. Now I'm hungry. Primary election day is Tuesday, June 4th. Now is the time to make a plan. Whether you plan to vote absentee by mail, in person at your county auditor's office before election day, or at your polling place on June 4th, It's important you take steps now to make your plan at voterready.iowa.gov. Remember, Election Day is Tuesday, June 4th. Find more info at voterready.iowa.gov. This message is presented by the Iowa Secretary of State. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. 
and we're back for round three of our best Nickelodeon original series debate. Before we get into the Elite Eight, I want our panelists to share their social media accounts, what else they're working on, and also what they identify as their Nick generation. Um, I'm going to start with you. Okay, so I am on Instagram and YouTube at Amamarfo. I have a half hour comedy special called Enjoy Your Nachos up there. Um, I just dropped a new 10 minute set called The Vault Sessions from a show I did last year from a used to be a bank vault in Lynn, Massachusetts, and that's a new fun one. And as far as micro generations, I remember the lead up to Nicktoons premiering and like being really excited because there were going to be three new cartoons that I could watch. So that was circa 1991. Thank you very much. Andrea, talk to us about your socials, what you're doing in your, your Nick Gen. Um, I am off most socials these days. I did just make an Instagram account for the first time in a few years. So you can find me at, at Dre Souffle. Um, I have an Etsy shop by the same name. Otherwise, I don't do anything. So thanks for upstaging all of us, Ama. Um, <laughs> uh, my micro generation, uh, I, we've talked a lot about it, but Rocco's Modern Life was a staple in my household. And I think even that might have been a little bit before my time. My sister and I have a pretty big age gap, so tend to watch more of uh, what she was watching at the time. So early to mid 30s for those wondering. Great. Thank you very much. Curtis, uh, socials, what you doing? Micro. <sighs> It's been 84 years. Um, so I also am not really on social anything anymore. I got rid of my Twitter slash X account. I'm on Instagram, but I don't do anything with it other than look at people. Uh, but if you want to look at anything that I might have posted at some point, at Kurt Itch, C-U-R-T-I-T-C-H is my handle. Um, my, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, so I was born in 86. I mentioned it in the Patreon episode. I don't care if people, I'm old. Um, in terms of Nick years and I've watched it all. I really feel like I was there in the beginning. MTV started on my birthday one year before I was born that I know. So Nickelodeon followed there after. And I feel like I grew up with Nickelodeon. Like these shows are my lifeblood. Joelle, uh, socials, what you're working on micro generation, uh, socials, nothing exciting. I don't do a lot on there anymore, but for what I'm doing, my podcast of the pocket pod, formerly animal crossing now just games and animals and fun things podcast it's monthly um and we're still going strong there so uh at the pocket pod on all the places where i know about social media so not on tiktok uh i identify as a exennial or however you want to pronounce that uh i was my two older brothers are gen xers and so a lot of my awareness started before I should have been aware. Uh, so yeah, I was watching You Can't Do That on Television probably at five years old, if that gives anyone some context. <laughs> yeah, uh, the same. I was watching uh, the really early 1980s Nickelodeons and uh, producer Bob, who's been my best friend since like ninth grade, will tell you, you watched some of those Nickelodeon shows in the 90s, but I genuinely like... I never watched Are You Afraid of the Dark? Uh, anything like after Ren and Stimpy debuting, I really genuinely feel like was after my time because my father was putting us to work. So um, for socials, really you should be following at Great Pop Culture Debate on Instagram or TikTok or at GPCD on Mastodon. But what you should really do is sign up for our weekly newsletter. It comes out every Monday at noon and it tells you about everything new in pop culture that week. Sign up by finding the link on this episode at greatpopculturedebate.com or via our link tree on any of our social media posts. Now, let's move into round three so I can pitch my Adventures of Pete and Pete reboot starring Pete Buttigieg and Peter Dinklage. Uh, first up, it is one seed Rugrats versus two seed Are You Afraid of the Dark? We're just going to go around the horn. I'm going to start with Ama, Rugrats or Dark. What are you going to go with? I am logged into this podcast recording as Susie Carmichael Sr. Ergo, I am Rugrats. All right, Andrea. A baby's got to do what a baby's got to do. <laughs> Sticking with Rugrats. Curtis. No! Oh my god. We haven't talked about Rugrats at we all. We haven't talked about it at all. This entire everything, Patreon or this episode. It is yep. it's a stunning cartoon. Everything that I know about the Jewish faith, I learned from Rugrats. Yep. Um, I have fought <laughs> tooth and nail for Are You Afraid of the Dark? You know what? I'm gonna vote for Are You Afraid of the Dark just because I know it's not gonna win. But it is it's the only show that is uh, in the vein that Nickelodeon has put out that I can think of in that, like, let's go tell scary stories. And I think it, I'm going to vote for it. Okay. Joelle. 
a Maccababy's got to do what a Maccababy's got to do. <laughs> Rugrats, please. All right, so we will advance Rugrats into the final four. Next, it's one seed Avatar, The Last Airbender versus three seeds Legends of the Hidden Temple. I'm going to start at the back of the pack. Joelle, where are you on this one? Um, I'm with Legends mostly because I don't really know Avatar that well. I tried. I tried. All right, Curtis. Avatar. Think, okay, things that Curtis is having a time. Uh, <laughs> Andrea, where are you? I will cry if you guys do not push Avatar forward. Full stop. Okay. Um, I, I enjoy making people cry, but I don't enjoy making you specifically cry. Ama, where are you? Well, Andrew's put me in a hell of a spot. <laughs> <laughs> and this is hard because I don't have that much familiarity with Avatar, but I do oh. kind of recognize its contribution to Nickelodeon as like a larger entity. So recognizing what's kind of had an impact on the channel overall, both of these things count. Uh, Curtis raised his hand. Can I stall? Yep, stall. <laughs> Amma, I want you to leave this podcast right now and go watch Avatar. Um, uh, as the host, I would prefer that you did not do that. <laughs> yeah, Bob is not going to let me do that. <laughs> Take about sixty hours and then come back. Yeah. So I, I was, I said, Legends of the Hidden Temple is the best game show that mm -hmm. Nickelodeon has. Mm -hmm. I'm voting for Avatar. Right. It is one of, if not the best written cartoons but also shows i yeah. think uh -huh. maybe ever it is it is so strong in from top to bottom how can you fit that much story development in basically 20 minutes it's a show that has it, it doesn't talk down to kids about very real issues. It talks about war, talks about genocide, found family, losing parents, losing friends. And it doesn't do it in a way that is like pandering to kids. It's they're doing it in a very real way. And for those of you not familiar with Avatar, there is like a very large spiritual element to it that isn't like overtly christian or it kind of leans more into like maybe asian spirituality a little bit I, i'm switching my vote I, okay. I i hear you i've heard wonderful things about this show i watched a bit of it maybe i'd give it a chance so all right so ama you, you're gonna abstain from this round yeah i guess i can yeah okay thank you thank you it's fine. We are advancing Avatar the next, the last Airbender. Next is one seed Hey Arnold versus two seed All That. I'm going to start with Andrea. Where are you? Um, I'm going to go with Hey Arnold personally. I think I'm going to get voted out on this one, so I'll save my arguments. Joelle, um, my vote is for All That, but I did just want to say, stoop kids, afraid to get off the stoop. <laughs> That's all. Ama, I'm going to say All That. I love Gerald the Bold Kid, but there we go. Curtis. I also really liked all, or sorry, Hey Arnold, but I'm voting for all that as well. Just because we don't really have, we've already talked about animation, animation, animation. We need a live action show still. All right. So all that will advance into the Elite Eight, uh, excuse me, the Final Four. And uh, four seed Rocco's Modern Life versus two seed Clarissa Explains It All. I'm going to start with Curtis. Rocco. Ama. Rocco. Andrea. Rocco. Well, Joelle. Uh well, it's Clarissa, but I guess fuck it. <laughs> but you just so we understand, you would have voted for Clarissa there. I one hundred million thousand percent would have voted for Clarissa. I probably would have hero. too if you had given me time. But I'm gonna <laughs> go with Rocco. <laughs> All right, so with that, we have our final four. We're going to take another quick break to learn about Hanukkah with the Rugrats. We'll be right back after these messages. These days, there's so much great TV. Sometimes you just don't have the time to tune in, but you're still itching to know what happened. Or maybe you watched the episode and just want to yell into the void and see if others agree. Well, if you aren't reading our episode recaps, you're only getting three quarters of the story. The Great Pop Culture Debate publishes weekly recaps of some of your favorite television franchises, so you can stay up to date without even watching. Head over to greatpopculturedebate.com and make sure you never miss a moment. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? 
No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey, are you a super fan of Taylor Swift, Jelly Roll, or Morgan Wallen? Are you that song nerd who likes to dive into every little lyric of every little song and figure out what everything means? Do you want to take that a bit further, though? Because I have a podcast called Songwriter Soup, and it dives into the journey of a songwriter and how those people help craft the soundtrack of your life. I'm Laura Veltz, and I'm bringing all of my friends together to discuss our funny little job writing for all of your favorite artists. Listen to Songwriter Soup wherever you get your podcasts. And we are back with the final four of our best Nickelodeon original series debate. At this point in the show, I always like to take a step back and see if we're where I thought we would be. So we have one seed Rugrats versus one seed Avatar The Last Airbender, two seed All That versus four seed Rocco's Modern Life. Uh, You can't see this because it's an audio medium, but two of the panelists just hug their heads in absolute shame and frustration about how they're going to make these decisions. One seed Rugrats versus one seed Avatar The Last Airbender. We're going to start in the middle of the pack, Joelle. Um, so without any any question whatsoever, it's Rugrats for me. Is it okay for me to talk about reg- Rugrats at this point? I would point? love for you to talk about Rugrats. Um, well, first of all, Rugrats is a very, um, as far as I'm concerned, a very Jewish show. And boy, do I love that in my life because there are so few of those. Um, and it was it taught, as Curtis said earlier, like ter- now Curtis knows about two whole Jewish holidays. And that's cool. <laughs> Um, You could learn even more and other stuff, but this is the one of the first things like my little brother was born in 93 and like he to this day still has little Tommy Pickles and his Maccabee, whatever, um, uh, as is like, I don't know, avatar on something. I don't don't know. Speaking of avatar, haha. Um, (laughs) Different avatar. Um, No, Rugrats is... So what what I love about it is is it's for everyone. It's not for kids specifically. I was watching it as an adult just this week and I was like, "Oh wow, they are mocking the hell out of those parents and I love it. The parents are a hot mess. The kids are smart, the kids are crafty. Give a kid a screwdriver and amazing things can happen. The the tool not the drink. Um <laughs> I mean the drink too, Maybe for both. being honest. It's yeah. got vitamin both. C. Fair enough. That's true. Kids love orange juice. Um, what, beyond just the Jewish content, um, they have actually, you know, talked about several other religions over the course of the series. 172 episodes, nine seasons it went for. It has three movies. It has a uh, sequel show, All Grown Up, which is actually pretty good and adorable. Um, and then they also did their best to re reboot it recently with like a new style of graphics i don't know how well that did but i don't really care we're talking about the 2009 ending period um the last thing i'll say is that reptar is a fucking icon thank you uh praise reptar ama where are you i am solidly in the camp of rugrats um as someone who's kind of followed the trajectory of animation for a long time getting Susie carmichael introduced as the first black character was a big deal um watch it like there was an anniversary of it the last couple weeks or so and seeing Cree Summer talk about how prolific she's had as an animation career but it was one of the first times she got to voice a black character um that was incredible um so yeah having like a black family middle class kind of like Cosby type feel to it if you remember the first time they show up in the house like Stu shows up holding Tommy and she mistakes him for the plumber which is A, very funny in its own right, but B, a thing that happens to Black people all the time. And if you tried to do that in live action, you would not get away with it. It's stunning. Uh, In a larger sense, Rugrats is probably, from a comedy perspective, an incredibly, one of my favorite, best written uh, shows. Phil DeVille is so funny all of the time. Um, But yeah, not only is it, in a sense, kind of the blueprint of what a Nicktoon could be, but it is also the best one and stayed good for a considerable length of its run excellent thank you andrea where are you on this one i want off this ride now. <laughs> <I'm done. laughs> this is supposed to be a fun episode <laughs> no avatar the last airbender is one of the best animated shows ever created that's my argument all right i've said enough that's- about avatar i could i could get i could say more but for now i'll stick with that curtis this is my final two I don't care what else happens. This is my final two. And you can hear that I am emotional because these two are the the best that Nick has to offer. But my vote goes to Avatar. I'm rewatching this series now. It is so meaningful and so rich and beautiful. 
it is the best show that Nickelodeon has put out, period. It is so unlike any other show that Nickelodeon has made. And I think that makes it the best because it has influenced everything outside of Nickelodeon. So you're leaving it to me. Um, and I'm not taking this decision lightly because obviously the people on this panel feel very passionate about both of these shows. So I want to make that statement. I am going to use a loophole that we've used on other episodes, which is sometimes a show or a thing um, kind of supersedes the topic itself and is bigger than that. I'll give an example. In boy bands, Beatles went out early because they're not a boy band. They're more than that. The, uh, in uh, Best 80s Soundtrack, Purple Rain went out early because it's not an 80s soundtrack. It's an amazing work of art. I think that Avatar is more than a Nick show. I th and you think the fact that it has a live action show coming up on another network is even more indication of that. Whereas I think Rugrats is quintessentially Nickelodeon and couldn't be necessarily anywhere else. I can't see it existing as the way it was on Netflix or on Disney. You know what I'm saying? So for that reason, I'm giving it to Rugrats. I'm not trying to be dismissive of any of the points that have been made or anyone's feelings. And I hope everyone on the panel and listeners can agree with that but I am giving the tip to Rugrats here with all of the respect to Avatar The Last Airbender and the panelists that voted for it. So Rugrats makes the final two. Finally, in the final four round, it's All That versus Rocco's Modern Life, which I'm hoping will not be as painful for my panelists as the last one. Joelle, you're smiling, so I'm going to go to you first. <laughs> I'll make this quick. It's All That 100% over Rocco. Ama. So you just said that you hope this one wouldn't be as emotional, and I honestly can't promise you that. I don't know what's I, going to happen. Um, the Both of these shows, I think, were tremendously formative in showing me what I thought was funny and how I think about ways to make jokes that are weird or silly or maybe kind of like deviate from who I feel like I am as a person day to day. Like it taught me a lot about who I am, which feels like a wild thing to say, like Rocco's Modern Life taught me who I am. But I think in both of those instances, just the writing of them and kind of the way that they put things together, what they did with story. Um, still to this day, like there are things that I'll say day to day, laugh about, think about as I'm writing something that pertain to both of these shows. And it feels, I know it is not impossible to make a decision. And Bob has said many times that this is the easiest decision that we will make all day. I don't even think that's true. <laughs> um, I'm going to give a slight edge here to all that. A thing that is surprising me as it comes out of my mouth, because that is not how I expect, that's not how my final bracket goes. Um, but I do think that, again, if we're speaking about things that transcend network, Rocco did have like a one-off reboot episode that was on Netflix. Um, whereas something like all that has stayed within the family of Nickelodeon and feels so imprinted into its fabric that it's kind of impossible to pull those two apart, whereas with Rocco it already has. So that is my decision. It was harder to make than I thought, but I am giving the slight edge to all that. Thank you. Curtis. I'm going to try not to cry again. I'm definitely not going to cry again. Um, I am also going to vote for all that. Uh, I love Rocco. I love that it pushed the envelope just enough. To me, Ren and Stimpy pushed the envelope too much. Rocco was right on, like perfect, right on the edge. That's why it's here to me. It's in the top four purposefully, and that's what I wanted. All that paved the way for kids to watch Saturday Night Live and in living color like those sketch shows on fox on anything like i watched those because i enjoyed all that andrea are you still speaking to me um if you could feel my pulse right now i'd like i think the transcending argument is bullshit because we're not talking about quintessential nickelodeon we're not talking about bigger than nickelodeon we're talking about best Nickelodeon original series. So I'm still mad about Avatar losing to Rugrats because I don't think Rugrats should be in the final four, personally. Uh, I think it's a great show, but final four worthy over some of the other ones in that section, I don't, I disagree. But regardless, I'm going with Rocco's Modern Life because I think it is the better of the two shows. I think it it teaches kids how to exist in our awful society. 
and take it with a grain of salt and to recognize the absurdity and the existentialism of it all in a way that no other show on this bracket really does. It is literally Rocco's modern life. It is him living his day-to-day life and it's doing it in a way that is zany and over the top and fun and imagine how boring life would be if you didn't have some sort of guideline like that that you know you just had the influences of all these shows with like great morals and lessons like that's fine that's good we need that but we also need to recognize the absurdity of the world that we live in and Rocco's modern life does that all that I'll give it its flowers. I think it is a gateway to those sketch shows like SNL and and Living Color. I did not go back and watch all that for this episode, um, mostly because I feel like I didn't really need to. It was a sketch comedy for kids. I kind of can remember what that's like. Rocco's Modern Life, I went back and watched and I still enjoyed it and I still remembered all these moments and I saw things I didn't see before as an adult with some of the adult jokes so i'm going with rocco okay i i still think we have three for all that uh so that would uh, wait has someone not voted yet i'm getting looks that no i voted but now i that might be shifting <laughs> uh, Same. Are you... okay ama where are you I think i'm back on rocco and i'll tell you the precise point of the argument that got me there the piece specifically about kind of like existing in late stage capitalism And I remember, like, watching an episode literally yesterday, because yesterday was Friday, and Rocco's on all day Fridays, so I watched a lot of it yesterday. And, yeah, just the idea of specifically Ed going to work, feeling stuck in his career, and then finding out that the job that he was up to be promoted for was given to somebody younger. So then he freaks out about feeling too old for things, tries to act younger, only to then find out, oh, the next slot that goes to promotion gives it to somebody who is actually a lot younger because he seemed like he wasn't mature enough for it. So there's just no winning. And that sense of like no winning, being able to be taught that, I think by my age, I was like nine and I'm watching it now in my late thirties and it feels the same. Like that's a really unique thing to be able to do. Um, Whereas all that, to your point, it's like sketch comedy and some of it is still quite good and it has elevated some really talented people, but it doesn't hold the way that Rocco does. So I've made it harder but I just need to say that. <laughs> As the host of this episode, I fully understand the there is no winning commentary. Curtis, did you switch to Rocco or are you sticking with all that? What makes it easier for you, Eric? <clears throat> uh, if you switch, that would make it so much easier for me. If I switched to Rocco, right? Yeah. Oh, oh Joel, Joel, please Joel. convince well, me. It oh. just, it doesn't make any sense to me to not have a live action show in the final I two. agree. It just doesn't make any sense to me. If we're just, if we're just looking at the full bracket, there was a lot of animation along the way. There was these like sprinkling of the live action shows and so many were actually left off of this bracket. Um, and all that is one of the ones that launched like a thousand other so things. Many. And, and, and like to Eric's point earlier, like this was, or Alma, you made this point. This was on Nickelodeon, only on Nickelodeon. It, it literally, they named an entire like se- like a reboot section of Nickelodeon called All That, 90s, whatever it was called. Like I, ha- I wrote it down somewhere. Anyway, 90s or All That is what they called it because I, All That is part the fabric. That's the other word we use. It's the fabric of Nickelodeon. And in the same way, Rugrats, that's already in the final two here. That one launched all those other animations we talked about and the entire career of Klasky Shupo. So it makes more sense to me that all that is here. I understand why Rocco is fantastic. When I went back and watched, I watched just about everything on this bracket, like this week, just different episodes, sprinkling of everything. And Rocco was cool, but all that was like nostalgia city. And I enjoyed it. And I was laughing at Pierre Escargot like I did like I was eight years old. <laughs> Go ahead, Andrea. Please, please. I don't think the argument of we have animation but no live action is a good argument because we're not talking about the fairness of the sides of the bracket. We're talking about the best Nickelodeon original series. And if that's what we're talking about, I still think Rocco takes the take. I uh, takes the cake. I don't care if it's all animation or all game shows or all live action in the end. It that shouldn't I, I don't like that argument. I think that that's a little bit of a cop out of an it's, argument. It's a piece of my argument, though. I don't think that's my only <laughs> totally. argument. It's just pointing totally. out the, the facts. That's all. 
I think ultimately what this is coming down to is the difference in rubric being quality what is best versus the actual meta perspective of what is most representative of Nickelodeon. And that's, I think, where we're getting into some issues here. Mm. So I need to do a quick poll to see where everybody is right now because I have no idea. Curtis, all real that. quick. All that. Joelle. All that. Ama. Rocco. Andrea. Rocco. Y'all are fucking kidding me. Make you him are do killing it. Killing me. This Curtis, is the worst back. episode I have recorded in years. I'm saying that right right now. You are all making my life terrible. And because of that, I'm going to make you all suffer. Um and that's very much in the spirit of Rocco's modern life. No, I'm kidding. Um uh, okay. I'm giving it to all that. I, I am sorry. Um I I I, I that's giving us a final two of Rugrats versus all that. Andrea, I, this is a battle of who could care less for you, correct? More or less, yeah. Are, are you guys happy with this final two? No. Like, no. <laughs> no. We are all miserable. What is more of being a millennial who enjoyed Nickelodeon right. than that? Uh, Andrea, do you have a pick? No. Uh, you guys go first. <laughs> all right. I'll go to, uh, I'm going to start with Joelle. Rugrats versus all that. I am I am with Rugrats on this one. Curtis. Rugrats. Ama. Oh, God. <sighs> Let me say right now, I am absolutely not going to work as the tiebreaker for the final decision. I'm not doing it. <laughs> if you can't get along, I'm going to pull this car right over. My whole body hurts. I'm just giving it to Rugrats so we can be done. Surrendering <laughs> is also a very Rocco's modern life way of looking at things. <laughs> Andrea. After much thought and consideration. <laughs> <laughs> I've decided that my window manner is Avatar The Last Airbender. Can we do I, that? Can we bring it back? I'm going with Rugrats. I think uh, when I think of Nickelodeon shows, I think of kids. Kids shows, N- Rugrats is a kid show. Okay, so after one of the most brutal knockdown smackdowns in the history of the great pop culture debate, we have a pick, and it is the best Nickelodeon original series is Rugrats. Do you agree? Do you think we need Clarissa to explain all the ways we were wrong? Tell us how you really feel by leaving a comment on this episode at greatpopculturedebate.com or find us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, or Mastodon. While you're there, make sure you subscribe and follow the podcast so you can hear about what new debates are coming soon, vote in open polls, and even decide which topics we tackle next. If you really enjoyed this episode, please take a minute to like and rate the episode on whatever platform you listen to. I want to say thank you to my panel. I genuinely think you are all that, and thank you for listening. If you loved what you heard, please consider supporting us on Patreon, where you can get even more exclusive content, and you get episodes a whole day early. We hope you have a good one, and remember, everyone is entitled to their wrong opinion. We had lots of them this episode, so it's log, it's log, it's big, it's heavy, it's wood. I don't know if it's better than bad, but I also don't know if it's good. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing, and now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere, and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.